Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Let's Play Stormblood. Everyone has buggered off to do other things and just left Alize here alone with us. So, what do you think we should do? Good to know we're we're still keeping up with Ironvald. He, he's been such a bro, even if in the background of all things. We need to include him in more of this stuff. Why didn't he come with us to fight the Primal? I love how just how the game has ways of telling you, oh hey, you know, you're 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 definitely gonna find something dangerous on this patrol, huh? We took back Alighieri without a fight. They're not gonna let this go lying down. Well, that's one patrol successfully down. Hopefully everyone else is handling themselves a-okay. There's trouble brewing here, I just know it. Sky armor, but you're hovering like three feet off the ground. Who, who is piloting this other robot? Or is it remote controlled? Apparently AI or remote controlled, I guess. Oh well. Now there's not. Alright, time to rendezvous with our friends. Well, I see you've been hard at work. Oh, who's calling? Peace and quiet around here. You, 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 you know just how to tell a funny, don't you? So hurry, we get a fancy new coat now. The game can not rudely interrupt me before I can put this on. Really sure you didn't want me along for this assault? Huh. You've improved, lad. Come now, father. You lured the fool onto my blade, and do not try to deny it. Are you sure you don't want my help? Our work here is all but done. What of Conrad and his men? They are for the main tower. The Skulls have offered fierce resistance thus far. But Conrad seems to believe he can convince them to lay down their arms. Then we will tend to the stragglers down below. With me! Report. Enemy forces have overrun the lower facilities and appear to be mounting an assault on the main tower. We have already received a request for reinforcements. A unit of legionaries has been mustered and is ready to depart. They await your orders, Commander. Stand down. Commander? 
tell them to stand down. Commander, if I may, our people, your people, are still in there. They will be slaughtered. You think I don't know that? I want nothing more than to help them, to lead the bloody charge, but I have my orders. Lord Zeno said no reinforcements. He would have us use the main cannon to destroy the installation. What? Kill our own soldiers? You must be mistaken! Mayhap you'd like to ask Lord Zenos yourself. I thought not. Initiate the firing sequence. Wars are won on the backs of the dead. Theirs and ours. There is no truth but this. We must remain firm and resolute and always, always do our duty. Now, give the order. Initiate firing sequence. How ironic that this is the one thing that we thought they wouldn't dare to do. Aye, aye. Initiating firing sequence. Release safety locks. Deploy main cannon. This is not going to go well. Ansfred, Rudolf, Hamlet. For us. For our people. For our future. I need you to confirm the target, Commander. Specular Imperatoris, main tower. Fire when ready. kind of interesting though that they can even aim the fire at the cannon to fire at their own towers I mean I suppose you want as much range on this thing as you can get regardless but what in the seven hells Long-range artillery! Those treacherous bastards! Their people were still fighting! Full retreat! Now! Relay the orders! Somebody get the megaphone! Understood. All forces retreat! I repeat, all forces retreat! Yeah, some of them people aren't making out of there in one piece. As gruesome as it is, I do appreciate the, the, the detail of, you know, some of the rubble falling off. And you even see one guy get hit by it already. Well, they may not be able to hear you in all the carnage, too, so...
Just trying to see if I can get a look around from this angle and can't really see much, unfortunately. I'm going as fast as I can! So yeah, funnily enough, the gates are closed, but, so how did everyone else get in? But I have to, I definitely appreciate, even though obviously it's in incredibly sad, but the fact that she is just, she is just completely freaking out at the moment, and she is worried about more her brother more than literally anything else, and uh, as as the, qu the quest tag showed you, that she, she is really really scared in this moment and it's probably the most fearful we have seen her thus far And, and and I definitely do do like that that line from Raban where um, she does need to be told like there's nothing we can do about this right right this second like you need to pull it to yourself together and we have other things to happen at the moment we're, we're taking we're we're looking into that other problem and it's. It's really just moments like that, that that I really, really, again, I've I've probably said this about twelve times throughout throughout this let's play. It's it's those kind of moments I want to see more of, and that that I so much appreciate from from our main supporting cast, and gives them so much more life to to how they they interact with one another, and and how you can tell you know the dynamics bet between people, and you know. Not only that, but have other people comment on it, like pretty much as, as Raban just did, because Raban knows what what is going on with her, and again, he has to to tell her just just very quickly, like I know, I get it, but there's other things that need to be taken care of. He doesn't he doesn't just immediately tell her just to shut up, you know. He's 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 understanding of of what she is going through in in the moment. Hi. Well, that's a good sign. She's fine. She she is seriously worried sick about you. But I really I again, I have to really appreciate his first thought is is where the hell is my sister, you know? Oh, oh he ain't looking too good. Conrad! Conrad, speak to me! It, it, it was all so sudden. Conrad had just convinced the last few skulls to surrender when, when, when we heard the bang and, and everything started to shake. 
We carried the survivors to safety, but Conrad's... We have done what we can for him. All that remains is to pray. <sighs> Conrad? Is, is that you, Lise? I can't... I can't see a damn thing. Well, that's that then. Time's up. What are you talking about? You'll be on your feet before you know it! Uh, it's all right, Lise. I've lived long enough. But listen, I want... I want you to lead the Resistance in my stead. Don't say another word. You'll recover. We'll recover. We'll bring freedom to Alamigo together. We're not gonna stop here. No, no you won't. Everything we've built, everyone we've brought together, I know you'll show them the way. You've got it in you, Lise. Not because you're Curtis's daughter or Ida's sister, but because... Because you're you. Because... You're you. Conrad. Lead them to victory. To freedom. I will, Conrad. I will. I promise. Next round, double the charge. Come, Nidhogg. We are needed. Well, well, well. The Cerulean Pipeline! Can we just take a moment that he just, just completely just leapt into the air and just blew the hell out of that thing. Pure awesome. One line of dialogue and just wham. Impossible! How could one man shoot that bastard? Shoot him! Well, he's no ordinary man now. <laughs> My lance has slain far greater beasts. You're welcome, boy. Notify all units! I want that intruder found! And get the engineers to fix my bloody cannon!
The savages are coming! So, yeah, it would seem that Estinian has been aware of what we have, an, have been up to in these here parts. How? Why? Don't really quite know. Although, if you might remember a while back when we saw him last and I explained how he got his plot armor, that same little self same little story, which, again, I, I should link below, hopefully I'll remember to do that, does state explicitly so that, yeah, he's he's been kind of stalking us and staying appraised of our situation from afar, so... But of course, that tale was not released, obviously, <laughs> at, the, at the time that... This patch was the live one, so... So, I do not really feel anything at Conrad's death here. Now, I understand, much like Mefred, why this impacts the lease, but all of the- Oh my god, Carby- Minion. We're, we're just gonna leave him there. Uh, it's funnier that way. Um, but you don't see, really, this interaction between the two or, you know, Lise in general with her relationship to to the Resistance. Now, the only clue you get of that is she refers to Monago as her informal name, indicating a close relationship between the two of them. But even though there was kind of forced foreshadowing earlier about Conrad wanting Lise to lead the Resistance in his stead, I don't think she's unfit for the position because she definitely has the heart and I think her outsider point of view about, you know, she really does care about the Alamegans and she has the outside point of view that she has suffered but not suffered the way they have and, you know, she, she, she's a new end, you know, a new beginning for them and she certainly does have the heart for it, she certainly does have the passion for it and she certainly does have the batter prowess to to back this up but you don't really see how receptive the resistance themselves is going to be with such a change to to the leadership and the fact that conrad just dies a stereotypical death where you know he, he's able to get off one final speech to pass the torch meanwhile the rest of the three of them Get, we're all in the tower when this collapsed, and they get off without a scratch. Like, not a single one of them is injured. And we know, you know, from the debris and stuff around, and the injured soldiers we just helped, that, yeah, Conrad was certainly not the only casualty. But when the three other people he's with just walk away without, just completely without a scratch, and the fact that, you know, he, he has that dying moment, it's just way, just, just too cliche, and... It just kind of just makes me not feel impacted about this as much as I should. And it's worth noting that going into Stormblood, when this was, you know, just in the promotional phase and whatnot, since we knew we were gonna, you know, basically, you know, throw punches and go to war with the Garlean Empire on, on two different fronts here, I admittedly was afraid that they were going to go with the with more of a dark and gritty war is hell kind of thing and there wouldn't be enough humor to to offset the darker moments because now now we're going to real war as compared to the more fantastical war with the dragons that was in heaven's ward and such things carry a different weight and i was so fearful that there wouldn't be enough you know humorous and lighthearted moments and and heartwarming moments to offset that kind of drama Thankfully, I was completely wrong about that because there have been plenty of those moments so far, but this is the second death we've had among our comrades so far in the story and I haven't failed to impact about either one of them and I consider that pretty much a negative. Now, you will hear people still to this day, you know, crying over Hoshafan and Izel's respective deaths, even though it's it's been several years since since 3.0 and, and either of those happened. But the reason you felt for them so hard was because they were your companions. They suffered with you. 
you know, they saw your trials and tribulations. You had, you had together. In the case of Azel, you, 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 you saw her, you know, change and have her resolve questioned and, and re-resolve to be a part of us. And, and even her and Astinian, who were, were staunch enemies at, at, at the start of it, you know, came to actually respect and was able to call one another, even if not to their face, friend by the end. And you see the development of, of, not only interactions between, you know, them and you as characters, um, but them and you as the player. You know, you you walk together, you suffer together, and you don't see this with Conrad and Mefred. So it just it just had almost next to no impact on me. And the one person's death who who we should be having a lot you know, should have held a lot of impact and hasn't because he's been failed to be mentioned this entire expansion is Papa Limo. Why do Conrad and Mefred get more attention to their respective deaths than Papa Limo did? That is a huge disservice to Papa Limo. Huge, huge, huge. Because even though he was the scion who suffered the least character development, should have gotten more moments uh, in the main scenario than he did, and while he was defined a lot by his relationship with the least, he was still a part of us. He was still a teammate. There is more mourning going on for from Infiliate and Moonbrita than there ever was to Papalimo. Why does his death not not shown, at least to have some kind of pretend impact on us, like Mefred and and Conrad does? You know. The, the most we get is at the very end of, of Heaven's Ward, where we clearly see his death does indeed have an impact on Lise, and that she is very, very angry with, you know, Thancred holding her back, and, you know, that she's, you know, she does have a moment during, during one quest line where she's, she's not a part of it, because she's just staring at the wall, just, just in solace of the whole thing, and, and Thancred, you know, chooses to stay by her side. We... I needed more moments of that with Papa Limo, and I don't get them, and it just annoys and frustrates me that the game is trying to get me so hard to care about Conrad and Mefred, and and I don't. For the reasons I just lined out, I don't. I think that should have gone to, that, that level of sympathy should have gone to Papa Limo instead, and it doesn't, and it I think it hurts the narrative to to not have a more impactful death throughout all this this destruction. The closest we've had is Gosetsu, but that was more by his choice of making that sacrifice, you know? And while that one does have an impact, they also just kind of leave it, you know, shortly after that happened. And he hasn't been mentioned yet for, for quite a while, you know? And it would have been nice for them and all this 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 chaos to, to be reminded of that. Like, even have Lee's comment on this, you know, that that you know, we we've we've lost another one and yes, there 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 is there is indeed a price to 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 this freedom. And yeah, they, 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 they try to make me feel more than I think they should about this whole thing. So hopefully Alphanel and Alize can, can reunite and probably glomp the crap out of each other. Um, it's, a, it's a damn shame we're not going to actually see that. Yeah. Both sides have suffered this day. I'm not picking sides right now. As much as we were just fighting, you guys were victims too and all this, you know? So yeah, we're just gonna take care of this and I'm sure you guys have had enough of my ranting and raving about a lot of things.
Oh, take a moment to rest. Everything's everything's a okay now. And okay, now we're gonna go back to do Elegiri. So let's just take care of that real quick. No, no, we can have a cry fest. We can have a cry fest. It's it's totally okay. I know we gotta figure out what the heck has been going on. The Imperials just fired just completely on our on on their own people. But um, since we have a break and we need to end this episode, we're all gonna have a cry fest. Um, for reasons I already stated, I don't really want to have a cry fest. But you know what? Out of respect for our fallen comrades, Gosetsu. And Papa Limo included, we will sit and we will have our cry fest. Alright? So thank you for watching everybody and I shall see you next time.